Hi, it's Dwyer, February 24th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Money1776.com, a free site. It's a Saturday, so it's time for another one of these weekly high-risk videos. Remember, nothing I say in this video should be construed as financial advice. I want everyone watching this video to do their own due diligence to rely on their take after talking with their advisors. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, something's going on in the economy. We need to be aware of it, right? People like Jim Simons, last summer of Renaissance Technologies, and Terry Smith of Fundsmith reduced their holdings in Amazon. Well, now we have Jeff Bezos, the founder, reducing his holdings. Folks, from my seat, Amazon's one of the best run companies in the United States. Right? When you see founders or passionate owners stepping away, reducing their ownership stakes, you need to be concerned. So Mark Cuban shocked a lot of people, certainly shocked me, when he announced that he was reducing his ownership stake in the NBA's Dallas Mavericks. Right, folks? Wealthy people see the storm clouds coming. I understand there's always a cover story. Right? The owner always wants to convince you that this was part of a pre-planned strategy to diversify their portfolio, yada, yada, yada. Right? You and I know differently, don't we? Right? If a passionate owner is suddenly reducing their ownership stake, they're seeing storm clouds. If the Dallas Mavericks are headed to the moon, if the NBA truly is vibrant, if everything is meeting or exceeding expectations, then Mark Cuban, who is a risk taker, would not be reducing his ownership stake. Now let's talk about where we are and understand, I'm not here trying to fit in to public opinion, right? I truly am not. I'm just making this video to share my thoughts on what I see is a turbulent financial environment ahead of us, right? One with twists and turns, one where the conventional wisdom really isn't wisdom. Now, when you're in Vegas, you know you're gambling, right? You have to, if you're going to play blackjack, convert your money into chips. You have to take affirmative steps to gamble if you're in a sports book. You have to stand in line. You have to place your bets. Or these days in Vegas, you have to take out your phone. And you have to open an app, log in, and actually place your bets. You know your gambling in Vegas. Sadly, in the real world, we don't know we're gambling. Even people with 401ks, or worse yet, these employer retirement plans where money's getting put in the plan and you're just banking on the expertise of whoever the money manager was that your employer picked when they set up the plan, right? In the real world, people are semi-conscious. They aren't even fully aware of what their elected representatives are doing. Now, I was raised in New York City, Queens, New York, right? Out here in California, at times I'll meet someone and I'll say, hey, I was raised in New York City. And they'll say, where? And I'll say, Queens. And they'll say, well, that's not New York City. Uh, yes, it is. 
I went to high school in the Bronx. I used to hang out in Brooklyn. Right, folks? When I think of New York City, I'm thinking about way more than the real housewives of New York City in Manhattan. Right? It's like sex in the city when, you know, everyone was in Manhattan, as if the rest of the city did not exist. Right? Understand, my favorite New York shows are old shows like Taxi, where, you know, they're taking you into regular people's apartments. Seinfeld, where we know what Jerry's kitchen looked like, and it wouldn't be confused with one of these kitchens on Real Housewives of New York, right? Regular people's apartments, um, you know, folks complaining about how high the rent is and stuff like that. Not penthouses, but real life, right? Well, let me just point out, you had something take place, and I don't want to be overly political here. I'm not endorsing any political candidate, right? But I need for New Yorkers, the people living in Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island, right? My, I have a cousin right now who lives in Staten Island, right? The people living in the boroughs and the people living just right outside the city. You know who you are. You might take L-I-R-R -R to work etc. Right? Long Island, Strong Island, whatever you want to call it. Where Eddie Murphy's from. Right? The surrounding areas of New York City. I need for people to focus on this travesty that's going to hurt financially the local real estate market. Right? It's this travesty where Donald Trump gets a real estate loan. Right? When I say Donald Trump, we're really talking about Trump's business entities. Right? He gets a real estate loan. Understand, Trump's name is big in New York City. Has been for years. Trump himself admits that he's had financial hardship. Right? The 1980s were up and down for Trump. There's a famous story where he walks by a homeless person with his wife, Melania, and both of them start wondering whether the homeless person had a greater net worth than Trump at that time, right? Because you're in the real estate game. You could be up millions, folks. You can be down millions, right? People who know Trump understand that he had financial problems, for example, with his casino investments in Atlantic City. So here's Donald Trump, big name, right? His father was a developer before him, right? Father, of course, a developer in Queens, my neck of the woods. Well, just understand, people fight for Trump's business. When you're a bank, you want to be associated with Donald Trump. Why? Because he's a big-time developer. He's woven into the fabric of the city, at least he used to be. Right? Full disclosure, I've been on the West Coast since the 1980s. Right? So, you know, Donald Trump himself has relocated to Florida. But understand, in New York City, where Trump still has a lot of business dealings, if you're a banker, you want to be associated with Donald Trump. It helps business. Word gets out of a Trump deal. Some other mogul is reading the paper and they see that it was financed by some bank. And they say, you know what? If I have a big deal in New York City, if Donald Trump trusts this bank, I'm going to call up this bank to see if I can get financing. Now understand the way the real estate game is played. You don't even have to be in commercial real estate to know this. Right? The bank will ask you, how much is your property worth? And you, of course, think the property is worth, or the project, the construction project, is worth more than the public does. That's why you're in it. It's no different than investing, where you're buying a stock. Why? Because you feel the stock's undervalued. You think, plug in the stock, Bitcoin, right? Or crypto, Bitcoin. NVIDIA, perhaps Amazon, you're buying them 
today because you think they're going to be worth more tomorrow. So, of course, you're engaged with the bank. You fill out a loan application. You have disclaimers that basically say, look, this is what I think. And then understand, the bank has a whole group of people, appraisers and others, who are going to do their due diligence. They're going to decide if the loan is worth the risk. They're going to look into your numbers. They're going to have their own numbers. Right, folks, if you own a home, you know this already. So let me just point out, Donald Trump takes out a loan from a bank. The bank gives Donald the loan, right? It's charging Donald interest because the bank's in business to make money, just like Donald is. Right? Donald Trump then pays back the loan with the interest. He fully performs. Donald was happy to get the money. The bank was lucky and happy to get Donald's business. It's a win-win, both profit. Right? Donald got the financing, whether or not the deal works out. Donald got the financing he wanted. The bank got the loan repaid with interest. Folks, that's it. Game over. Now, just to understand, you're hurt if you're a taxi driver. If you're a teacher. If you're a taxpayer in New York City, you're hurt today. Because the DA, Letitia James, I think she is sharp. She's missing the big picture here. I don't care what the public mood is. Right? If you're a taxpayer in New York City, and Lord knows they charge you taxes in New York City, and you're hoping that your public officials do things in such a way where they're targeting real criminals, not folks who are actually trying to help the economy. Not folks who are involved in commercial real estate where their dream is to have a project that makes money, employs people, raises property values. Isn't that what commercial real estate developers want? Well, just to understand what happened. And New Yorkers should be outraged, not just truckers. But the New Yorker on the street, the people I was raised with, right, should be outraged that the DA decides to go after Donald Trump on a loan he repaid. The working theory is that Trump lied on his loan application. Trump overvalued the assets he listed as collateral on his loan application. That's the claim, right? Well, folks, it's ridiculous. Now we have the judgment. I want people to think this through. If you think the city of New York is going to benefit dollar for dollar with every dollar that Donald Trump pays on this judgment, then you don't know economics. I'm telling you right now, and I mean right now, you have a lot of real estate people, a lot of real estate developers, people like Grant Cardone, who are pulling their money out of New York, not as part of some protest. No, it's because there's too much risk involved. You can't afford to be in New York if you feel they're going to suddenly take a microscope to your loan application after you've repaid the loan. And then say, hey, we disagree with your valuations on this collateral here. We're going to go after you for millions of dollars on a loan you've already repaid. Not only that, we're going to go after members of your family for ill-gotten gains on a loan you've already repaid. A loan where the lender showed up in court and testified on your behalf 
about how they wanted your business, how they got your business, and how you repaid their loan in full. Right, folks? This is a misuse of the judicial system. Whether you like Donald Trump or not, whether you thought he was a great president or not, whether you voted for him or not, this is a misuse of the judicial system. Understand the way it goes. Developers are pulling out. New York City now has a discount, as if commercial real estate isn't under pressure already. Right, folks, a lot of people who would be doing deals in New York are seeing this ridiculous verdict and they're saying, nah, nah, there's too much risk involved. You have countless cities with countless real estate possibilities. Why would I do business in some jurisdiction where they're going to come after me after I have repaid the loan in full? Right, folks, real estate is subjective. I can tell you, I'm a divorce lawyer. I can tell you, I've had trials where I've had an appraiser I've hired get on the stand and testify about the value of the family residence. And somebody else has a rival appraiser. And we're arguing over whether this property is really a comp and you know, what exactly is the real estate trend? Folks, that's subjective, right? Even judges will throw their hands up in the air and say, hey, you know, can't y'all go out in the hallway and solve this? These folks were living in the home. Certainly they would know what the home is worth. Right now, you're telling me that someone paid back the loan? And yet the state of New York still went after them? Shame on New York City. And folks, I love New York City. Shame on New York City. You've just cost the taxpayers billions of dollars. Right? Think about the scope and nature of real estate deals. All it takes is some major investor who was about to participate in a big-time real estate project in New York City saying, hey, nah, too much risk, right? Ask someone who owns their own business what the value of their business is, right? The person's going to be a little bit on the fence, right? Because, of course, they view their business as worth vastly more than the rest of the public does. What they put on their tax returns, for crying out loud, might be different than what an auditor might conclude the value of the business is worth. Right, folks? Valuations change depending on the context. Here, the relevant fact is that Donald Trump repaid the loan. There's no case here. Right? If I'm still living in New York, I'd be hoping and praying that Trump wins on appeal. This is an embarrassment. Let's talk about markets, right? Let me just say I'm not bullish on commercial real estate in New York City, right? I'm also not bullish on real estate wherever you have these hyper-aggressive, unduly political district attorneys. Now, let's uh, talk about artificial intelligence. And what I want people to do is to remember way back, late 70s, early 80s, when there was something we called high tech. That's what the sector was called, high tech, right? People back then understood you were talking about personal computers, which not everyone thought was a product that people needed, right? My parents were lost on the concept of why people would buy personal computers, right? This is as they had tax people come in and help them prepare their taxes. 
This is as they sat down at the kitchen table with paper and pen trying to figure out the family budget. Right? They couldn't link what they were doing with the need for a personal computer. Put simply, what we call what we called high tech in the late 70s, early 80s, as you could imagine, is low tech by today's standards. But what happened over time? was that the word high got dropped from the high-tech phrase, right? We started to understand that technology was technology, right? We talk about the tech sector, even as we're talking about the most advanced technological companies out there, right? Google, Amazon, Meta, we call it the tech sector. Right? Well, right now we're caught up on the word artificial. Right? I want you to look around you as you talk to your, I won't say the word, uh, we'll call it Alex. Right? We'll leave the A off. As you talk to your Alex, and it changes the TV station for you. Right? I need for folks to understand that already you are submerged in a world where you're relying on machines and computers to do things like your math, your spreadsheets, right? Your YouTube videos. So I believe in time, what we now call artificial intelligence is going to lose the word artificial. It's just going to be intelligence. You're going to assume as you talk with someone, that they've used what we now call AI as part of their due diligence. Right? You're expecting a certain level of performance. Right? Let's be clear on that. Now, I believe it's really important to just understand the fact that NVIDIA and their recent earnings report uh, is making a lot of money hand over fist. Right? They have the jump on many in the GPU space. We'll talk about GPUs and other PUs. Right? They have the jump on many. But you need to realize that back in the day that I'm talking about, the late 70s, early 80s, you had a bunch of people making computers, personal computers, right? Let's say you were right back then and you thought, you know what? PCs are going to be a bonanza. And you thought, what am I going to buy? Right? You might remember compact computers back then. You might remember gateway computers back then. Folks, you have a lot of computer companies from back then that did not make it. It's hard to predict the ones that did. Right? A few years into the 80s, you had a college student who was building computers in his dorm room on college. Right? How could he possibly compete? Well, that student, Michael Dell, starts Dell Computers. And Dell Computers is still around. It's vibrant. It's very hard to pick the winners and losers. In the moment, you think it's obvious, right? PCs are going to take over. Here are the 10 companies that have a great foothold in the market. And these are going to be 10 companies that make it, right? Don't confuse the market with your individual market participant. NVIDIA is ruling the roost right now. I'm going to make the case here that the market might be more vast than any of us realize in this moment. But that doesn't necessarily mean that NVIDIA is going to be ruling the roost tomorrow. Right? I believe what savvy investors need to do is when you spot a market like this, you need to think in terms of buying a basket of stocks 
and you need to be nimble so your basket changes over time. So if you believe in NVIDIA, you say, okay, great, I want some NVIDIA. Understand, these days, you don't have to pay for a full share. I'm not talking about leverage either. I'm talking about apps like Robinhood allow you to say, hey, I'm going to buy $200 worth of NVIDIA. That's less than a share, but it gives me exposure to NVIDIA, and I can do so on a fractional level. Right? I don't have to wait for stock splits. I can get in now. Know the space. You might then say, you know what, let me also get some AMD. Let me get some INTC. Right? The point is, you want to figure out who the players are in the GPU market. And then you want to have a little bit of a stake in each of them. Some will fail. You heard me mention Compact, right? Some will fail. Some will have huge drawdowns. You understand if you have been with Amazon since its infancy, you know there were periods where Amazon lost a lot of its market share. You need to be prepared to ride the bull. You need to be prepared to Figure out if the public narrative matches the numbers. Right? Your PE, the credit rating of the company. Also, things like management. Right? Are they doing things like buying back shares? By the way, even Microsoft right now is buying back shares. I don't like that idea. But you need to ask yourself, is the share price market-based or is it artificially enhanced well let's get after it and what I want to do you heard me mention GPUs those are graphics processing units but I need for folks to realize that there's different types of processors that expand artificial intelligence capabilities GPUs are just one of them you also have tensor processing units, TPUs. You also have language processing units, LPUs. Let's talk about each. I see I'm at 27 minutes. I'll try to speed this up. GPUs, think of the parallel processing that is needed to create a visual depiction in video games. And now, believe it or not, short films, eventually movies. Folks, I believe GPUs as successful as they are. And just look at the market cap right now of NVIDIA. I believe GPUs have a long runway ahead of them. There is a possibility that NVIDIA actually justifies its huge market price right now. Let me just say this, someone who I follow, a guy named Jesse Felder, F-E-L-D-E-R, wrote on February 16th, to get to a $740 share price, and understand NVIDIA is past that now, post-earnings, but Felder wrote, to get to a $740 share price simply requires NVIDIA to maintain a monopolist-like operating profit margin of... 55% for the next decade while also growing sales 10 times to more than $600 billion. For context, the entire industry sold $527 billion worth of chips last year. In other words, folks, NVIDIA is going to have to go on a Goliath run for the next decade to justify its current share price. Let's talk about why that might actually happen. What I want people to do, and I'm not endorsing NVIDIA, I'm just saying investors be aware of the GPU space. Right? NVIDIA's making a lot of money. They just blew past their whisper number 
their earnings report was positive. Right? What I want people to do is to go to the following website openai.com slash s-o-r-a again that's openai.com slash s-o-r-a understand where we are right now we're at a point where you can type out text and AI based on the text that you type out can create a short film right they do this kind of like how Barley Marl if you're into hip-hop years ago came up with sampling and would take sounds from different songs hip-hop and non-hip-hop and would splice them together so you would actually have music that MCs would then put their voice over. Well, understand what the AI is able to do now is they can take film clips of Times Square in New York City. They can take other film clips of people walking through New York City. They can splice them together, give you a 3D depiction of Times Square in New York City, and show you a person walking through Times Square that matches the description you have put into your text, asking AI to create this short film. Now, right now, you're going to see an ex you're going to see examples of such film footage on the website I've just mentioned openai.com slash SORA now let me point out what could happen why this is so mind-blowing folks this could ditch slodge literally shake up disintermediate much of the film industry Tyler Perry was about to expand a studio. He was going to invest hundreds of millions of dollars doing so. He saw this technology. He's holding off on the investment. He realizes that because of this technological breakthrough, the need for a big studio might no longer exist. Understand, Perry is someone who made a movie and decided he didn't want to wear a lot of makeup to show that he was aging in the movie. So what he did is he made the movie. Then he went back and digitally put on makeup on his character. He understands the value of the technology. Right? And so, folks, just understand, as advanced as AI is right now, if it allows filmmaking, not just stills, but actual filmmaking based on text input, just think about the international market. Right? You just had the Berlin Film Festival. Understand, Japan, vibrant film industry. China, vibrant film industry. Just think about your own consumption of video, right? Imagine if I didn't have to be in front of a camera and I could actually just punch in some text and create this video. Imagine how much time that would save me. Now imagine if this were, let's say, some major movie, The Godfather, that I could actually show on a streaming service right because I believe we've already disintermediated movie theaters one man's opinion right just imagine if I was able to sell this on Netflix or Paramount Plus or Peacock without doing more than you know typing in a story and then some forensic rendering 
Like, folks, just imagine how many movies are going to get made. Just imagine how much media is going to change. Now, every author would be able to say, hey, let me put this book that I've written in video form. And let me release both. Why should I just get an author's take from the depiction of my work in a movie? Screenwriter's take. When I can produce it myself. All I need to do is to hire some people who know how to do some rendering touch-up to bring this to market. Let's talk about some other processing units. You heard me mention Tensor Processing Unit which was developed by Google. What that means, folks, is that it's well-funded. It has financial backing. Look at the hundreds of millions of dollars that Google has on its balance sheet right now in cash. You not only have the technology out there, you have the funding for the technology from ongoing, well-known corporations. Now understand, TPUs are excellent for machine learning. The increased use of robotics in commercial production, right? We mentioned Jeff Bezos earlier. Understand, Jeff Bezos is one of the people who's investing heavily in robotics, right? Elon Musk is in robotics. Those jobs out there, that look like they're too dangerous for many humans, right? Let's say there, there's a limit to what you want stuntmen to do as you're creating a movie. Well, just imagine if that can be done with a robot. Understand the technology is stuff that I can, is such that I can have a robot in the car, right? The car, of course, could be autonomous driving, right? Think Google Waymo. I'm doing a movie scene, I don't even have to put the robot in costume. I can change the way a metallic robot looks. Post-production. Right, I can have a robot drive a car off a cliff. Right, think Thelma and Louise. I can have the car go off a cliff with a robot in the car. I can have the robot jump out the car. Have this be some kind of James Bond beginning, right? Think of Bond going off the cliff at the beginning of The Spy Who Loved Me, Roger Moore, 1977, one of the better Bond films, right? Folks, I can do all of that thanks to TPUs. Think of walking into a fast food place and you have a robot that does the cooking for you that makes the pizza for you. This technology, by the way, is already here. That makes your coffee for you. Right? Imagine how fast that technology is going to spread and is spreading through the fast food industry and the number of workers that it's going to disemploy. Let's also talk about languaging processing units. Language processing units. LPUs right? They focus on sequential verbal interactions. Think of ordering at a drive through window, verbally, without having to talk to a human. Think about all of those apps where you have a song playing on your phone and it can figure out what song is. Based on just the first few bars, they can put the sequence together, they know what's being said. Think about your own conversations with your personal assistants, right? Alex, um, others. Imagine a drive through at a fast food place that speaks several different languages. So you're in the car with a cousin from Africa and the drive through can actually have your cousin speaks Swahili and still get the burger. 
Right, folks, it's not hard once the first model is made, especially given the prevalence of chains in the fast food market. Imagine that French girlfriend you have speaking French and being able to order a burger, right? No confusion, more efficiency than talking with a human, right? Filipinos can order their food in Tagalog. If this technology spreads, imagine your own vacations, right? You're in Europe someplace, you're struggling with, you know, your language app, your language isn't, your language skills aren't as good as you thought they were, but you're able to go wherever you want, even if no one around you is speaking English. And at the fast food drive through you can talk in English and still get that burger you want, right? If the technology is on its game, you will be able to customize that burger. Right, so what I want people to do is to look at chip makers, right, MU, Micron, right, NVIDIA, um, AMD. Look at the chip makers in these spaces. I believe the market is most buoyant right now for GPUs. I believe you need to analyze each of the players. You need to keep track of each of the players going forward with an understanding that some of the players might be fully priced right now. Some of the players have huge investments. Intel has huge investments um, that will bear fruit later. Right, just understand that right now you've had a huge step forward in what we're calling artificial intelligence, which will simply be viewed as intelligence, which will simply be viewed as a necessity in some of the commercial transactions going forward. Those are my thoughts today. I see I'm over 40 minutes. I apologize for the length of this video. We'll try to be more curt. We'll try to be more direct in the next video here. Let me thank you for stopping by this week and please feel free to leave your comments on anything I've said in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.